Hey there, so today I want to talk about the Ryzen 5 5500U and how it's holding up in 2023. Now this is a product that was first launched in the beginning of 2021, but even then that's kind of misleading because what the Ryzen 5 5500U is, is essentially just a rebranded 4600U, a product released all the way back in 2020. Now the HP Pavilion that you see right in front of you right here is what I've been using with a Ryzen 5 5500 you for pretty much two years now. Within this time, I've pretty much used this system every single day and I've tested hundreds of games on here. And seeing as how we're now two years into this product's life cycle, I wanted to kind of just sum up where it stands right now in the current market, especially since there are still new systems coming out with this specific chip. It really just does not seem to die. And I'll explain to you why there's a good reason for that. Now, in terms of the CPU performance, even though this system is multiple years old at this point. The design of it is very much a future-proof design. We're talking about six cores, 12 threads. Now these are Zen 2 cores and we are at this point on Zen 4, but it's not as behind in terms of performance as you would think. Now with Cinebench R23, in terms of the multi-core score at 25 watts, which is about the maximum that most systems out there with this specific chip will actually let you go, you could expect to get around 67 43 in terms of the multi-core score. A decent enough showing though it is beaten out by the 5600U which replaced it as that gives us a same TDP score of 8716. So there is a difference there but it's not a very drastic difference especially considering the price points that systems with the 5500U are starting to reach. But let's look at some actual gaming performance in some modern titles in 2023 just so that we can get an understanding of where it truly lands lands in terms of a gaming system. Now 2023 has proven to be a very brutal year for PC gamers if you're looking to play brand new AAA titles. But even the best running ones like you can see here with Resident Evil 4, the level of performance that we're getting on a system like this is just not doable and that's even using the most aggressive settings with something like FSR. Now FSR 2.0 does have a pretty major overhead and does impact the performance in lower end systems like this. But even using things like FSR 1.0 in a lot of these titles is just not enough to save the experience. Now, Star Wars Jedi Survivor has proven to be one of the most anticipated titles of the year, but of course launched with a litany of performance issues. This is important to acknowledge because I actually ran into a problem with the game itself where if I try to actually load into the game and actually do things in it, my capture card would absolutely freak out. It would glitch out and go to a black black screen, then show the game, then black screen, then show the game. So it was pretty much constantly flickering. So I actually could not capture gameplay that you could see of it. But if I did not use my capture card, I could play it perfectly fine on my specific system. So in terms of the actual performance numbers that I got, running the game with the lowest in-game graphics settings and using FSR with the game set to a base resolution of 720p meant that we were doing some very, very aggressive drops in resolution and even then that was not enough to boost our performance because the FPS average that I got was 25 FPS with a 1% low of 8, which means it was an unplayable experience. It was a stuttery mess. And of course, I can't even show you how bad it was because the game itself just really seemed to hate my capture card. So I'm not 100% sure what is up there, but the game itself is in such a disaster of a mess that it's no surprise that it can't run on such a low end system like this. And unfortunately, this is a trend that continues throughout 2023. Of course, something that became very apparent across pretty much any of the titles that launched this year, including something like Wild Heart, is that PC ports are just not really being considered as important for a lot of these companies. Again, this is another title that launched that performed pretty noticeably bad on higher end hardware. And so a low end system like this is pretty much going to get you the most absolute brutal experience because even on a higher end system, you're still going to struggle to play this well. Of course, again, that's if 
if you can even get any new titles to launch. Redfall, which is the most recent disaster of a PC launch, did not even run on here. The screen that you're looking at right now is what was just the only thing I could get to happen after trying to launch the game multiple times and leaving it like this for well over an hour. It never loaded into anything. This was pretty much the most I could get in terms of playing Redfall, but considering that I already played it on my main PC, this was about as much fun as I had with Redfall. So in general, I didn't miss out on much, but I really wish I didn't waste all of my time downloading this game on multiple systems because it ended up being so mediocre to play. I absolutely do not recommend touching this game at all. But if you're on a system with a 5500U, that is not something you need to worry about because again, it will not let you play the game. Really, in terms of AAA launches, one of the ones that gave me one of the most playable experience was, of course, Dead Island 2 because of the fact that it is a game that has been in development for so long that it's actually using a relatively older engine. It still wasn't an amazing experience, but it was far more playable than most others. Still, in general, it's really showing that this hardware is just not going to be able to keep up with AAA titles, and realistically speaking, it could barely do that when it first launched back in 2020. Remember, this is just a rebranded 4600U. At this point, the Vegas 7 in here is really just not able to keep up with brand new AAA titles, but smaller indie titles or smaller games in general, like Minecraft Legends that you see here, you're actually able to get some pretty decent levels of performance out of this system to this day, just as long as you can actually raise your TDP up from the stock 15 watts. If you're on a system where you can only run it at the stock settings, you're going to run into some pretty major limitations, especially trying to play any more modern titles. But just in general, it really seems like if you want to get a decent gaming experience out of this system, you have to play older titles or you have to play newer titles that are just lighter. So if you're an indie game addict, if you're a gotcha game addict, or if you're just working through a backlog of older AAA titles, you're going to be able to still have a great time on here. But it's very clear that the 5500U is just not able to keep up as well as it could when it first launched. Now, that being said, it it has had a very, very fulfilling life. And again, there are still systems launching with it. Currently, b SCR5 series actually has a model with the Ryzen 5 5500U. Now, you can normally find this on sale currently for somewhere around $280 to $290. At that price point, it's extremely competitive. You can also find laptops with the specific APU also hitting around the $300 to $400 price point, And it's also still very competitive there. That being said, if you do have the money for some of the higher end systems, like the model with the 5600H or the 5800H, then I would definitely recommend going down that route, especially if you can also squeeze into the tier with the 6600H. Guardian A2 really was a game changer, and it has pretty much changed the entire landscape for iGPUs and pushed them towards a performance tier that they just have never been at before. And the Radeon 7 in the 5500U is at this this point really starting to show its age in comparison to some of its competitors. But everything that does compete with it in its price range does have some faults. While you can find some systems out there that have very similar CPUs, it's the iGPU that does end up being the winner here just because of the fact that on the very, very low end, iGPUs are extremely cut down. So having a almost full Vega iGPU on here is actually pretty nice. So if you're extremely tight on budget, the price point points where systems with the 5500U are starting to hit are not bad, but if you have some more cash, there is more performance on the table that you can definitely get for not that much more money. We're at a price range where an extra $50 up to even an extra $80 might actually bump you up to another performance tier. But where the 5500U really stands in 2023 is pretty simple. It is the budget option and it is the budget option king. Neither Intel or AMD really has anything that competes with it at its price point. At the extremely low end, AMD really cuts a lot of corners to the point where their Mendocino series of APUs really is just not worth getting. Not when you're within the price range of the 5500U where you at least get six 
cores and you get AI GPU that is actually going to be capable. Because remember, while, even though Mendocino is RDNA 2 based, it's only two cores as opposed to the eight cores that are on the Steam Deck, the six cores that are in the 6600H or the 12 cores that are in the 6800H. So at least here you get seven Vega cores, which are going to perform noticeably better than two RDNA 2 cores. But we are also within a price range where if you can spend an extra 20 bucks and get something like the 5600H, having the extra IPC from Zen 2 going to Zen 3 is actually going to be pretty nice. And you're not really going to be spending that much money. But as it stands, the 5500U pretty much remains the budget king, especially if you're looking to be playing some lighter titles like Valorant, League of Legends, Minecraft, or if you're looking to do emulation as well as playing just older AAA titles. But for modern AAA titles, it really is starting to suffer. I will say though that if you're on 8 gigabytes of RAM, definitely consider an upgrade to 16 or even 32 gigabytes. 32 gigabytes of RAM is not that expensive anymore, and it could prolong the life of the system a little bit more, especially for the workloads that you can do out there. The CPU is still more than capable enough for today, especially for most day-to-day -day tasks. And the iGPU is still going to get you by in a lot of titles out there. Just know that for the AAA market out there, you are pretty much just shut out completely. PC is going through a very rough patch right now, and being on a low-end system means you're going to suffer greatly with newer titles, but older titles are still going to be able to keep up perfectly fine. So keep that in mind, and I'll catch you in the next one.